This is Short Hammer. It is the 29th of March, 2020, and this is Trading Zones. So this past week was very interesting, and it's funny how, you know, week to week or day to day, just the perspective changes. Take a look at the SPY here, and the $2 trillion stimulus package has been signed the emergency is over the markets are saved let's all just buy 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 and we're right back on track new bull market no the problem has not been solved and i compare it to and i'm trying to think how can i have a less harsh comparison like let's say that you have a bottle of water that has holes in the bottom of it and it's a gallon bottle of water and you get a um, a pint of water stimulus package and you pour it in the top. Will that solve the problem that you have that the bottle of water has holes in the bottom and it's leaking? No. If you want to keep water in that bottle, you have to keep pouring pints of water into the top of that bottle until you figure out how to plug the holes that the that the water is leaking out of. Our economy is leaking. Why? Because we have the coronavirus and it's spreading. People are scared and people are not working. Will a stimulus package put people back to work? No. We need a cure. So will the market continue to go up? It just depends. But we haven't solved the underlying problem. And in fact, the underlying problem has gotten worse. There are more cases now than there were when this drop began. So technically, this can, I think this is more of a, a technical relief bounce. And I think this is gonna get sold off again. I could be totally wrong. But either way, let's look at these levels. So first up, we uh, closed above the 250.41 level. So below this, we have 239.82 on the SPY. Below that, I have 233.79, then 228.27 to the downside. Below that, we didn't quite reach the 212.95 area. So we ended up being above that. And above where we close, we have the 260.66, the 273.46, and the 280.93. Is it possible that we go above this if we continue to rally? Yes. Do I think we're going higher? Mm, it depends. Uh, specific companies did receive um, or are receiving a bailout, but the underlying problem has not been solved, so I do believe we're going to be going back down. So watch your positions. And so if we open on Monday uh, and we happen to be gapped up, look at the levels. So if we're gapped up and we're above the 260.66, if as long as that holds, if we get a pullback to this area and um, the market looks bullish, I would uh, get long off that area. If we get a pullback below this area and we back test or we just continue to be weak, I would fade it into the next area. So the way that I play these levels is based on where we open and based on the overall trend of the market, like, a, you know, is it, um, do we have more advancers than decliners, uh, et cetera? If we're bullish, then I'm going to get long. If we're bearish on the day and we're below a level, I'm going to get short. Now, what I will usually not do um, is get long or short in between levels unless the candle structure provides a, uh, a good intraday entry or if I'm utilizing um, Elisa's pivot strategy. But these are the levels that I have for the SPY. Be careful on your long positions if you happen to swing any. Just be careful because the underlying problem has not been solved. So it's very dangerous to be swinging any long positions uh, right now. The problem's still there. Cases are exploding in the United States to the upside. Um, so it's actually a very dangerous time to, to technically be swinging anything and actually betting either direction because you could still see a little bit of a pop and more upside. Um, and then, it, or it could be a drop. Maybe we could gap either direction. We have to see oh, where we open. Let's take a peek at Amazon. 
Where are you, Amazon? So this uh, 1955-48 area looks to be holding up. And we see that we've tested that area once, twice, three, four, five. And this wasn't really a test. Let's look at, look at the four hour, see how that looks. Take a peek on the four hour, boom. So on the four hour, it's, it's like we almost ran our heads directly on the, uh, on the 26th, directly into this 1954 or 1955 48 area couldn't get above it and we sold so we are above this um, 1885 which does happen to be an area we had to see where amazon opens so based on where amazon opens i'd watch the 1885 if we open below that you may want to get short against that depending if the market's bearish and we're headed to the downside then you can watch the 1850 the 1833 66 to 1824 51 and potentially the 1805 area the 1805 1798 and 1792 are areas where on the way up um the sellers made it difficult to get through call that the bad neighborhood and on the way down maybe the buyers will step in and try to push this back up as we mentioned before we are above that channel that 1830 by 1747, which was a strong channel that we spent a bunch of time in after the July earnings. So um, we did make it above that. It's right down in this area here. We did make it above that. So what we want to look for is will the buyer step in and hold this up? I think... Um, I'm just going to play levels because right now it's hard to tell which companies are going to do well and whose earnings will not be crushed. And I'm thinking a lot of these online companies, specifically like Amazon, who's delivering a, a, just a ton of stuff right now, whether through their Whole Foods uh, market or through um, just delivering things off of Amazon Prime. But the question I have is, will Amazon Web Services take a hit? Because maybe uh, new businesses aren't um, aren't popping online or opening new um, new companies. Maybe the, the the so I don't know because a lot of, it's a lot of um, brick and mortar companies that utilize Amazon Web Services, right? So are they going to take a hit? It's a lot of advertisers that utilize Amazon Web Services. Or is there a lot of advertising going on right now? They're going to take a hit. So I'm not sure that in looking at one aspect of Amazon's business, and I know this is usually just more technical than fundamental, but looking at one aspect of Amazon's business, uh, their, their prime side, um, online store side, and their Whole Foods grocery side. And then if you split that and then turn around, take a peek at uh, what Amazon Web Services may be doing, I'm not sure how those numbers will square for earnings so we'll have to see but these are the levels that you want to watch um 1885 below that uh 1850 below that 1833 below that 1824 if we get below 1830s we're back in that channel between 1830 and 1747 if we uh bounce Watch the 1916s the 1934s and i would definitely uh keep an eye on that 1955 area because if you look at the last few days um and not even just the last few days just period right we've had a problem with uh back-to-back -back days of the price advancing above the 1955 area so if you look here we were above below above below above below can't get above so it's almost like a peekaboo here. It's not holding above. We're not seeing advancement. So what you want to see, for me, I'd want to see is look here. We're above, we're above, we're above. Uh, test back below, back above. Like the strength as we're climbing here, you can see the strength as the buyers are feeling that there's more value to the upside. They're feeling good about this. They're pushing this bad boy up. Whereas once we get up here, we're not seeing advancement above that supply area. Yeah, we see these pops and we're above here, but where's the follow-on uh, 
follow on bullish perspective or bullish drives to the upside. I don't see that. Peek at Microsoft. So we pushed up, hit our head right below that 156.59 area, came back down. So based on where we are, you want to watch, and this is the four hour, watch the 148, below that the 141.51. If we happen to hold, then 152, 26 to the upside, then 156.59, above that 160.49. Let's see how the daily chart looks. Daily. Okay. So we definitely want some advancement here. See the candle structure there. Here we ran into on this push up. So we want this price to advance and we want to get above this 156 area again. Get a nice little squeeze to the upside here. Had to be nice. So those are the levels to watch on Microsoft. Let's see where NVIDIA is. Let's see, NVIDIA. Ooh, okay. So if we remember on NVIDIA, we had this trend line that we drew that we uh, were wondering if we would be able to get back to. So we. this is from uh, August, it looks like. And we were riding this trend line. Let's see, boom. Pull back to it, boom. And we broke below. And here you see us trying to get above. But look, you don't see the bullish candlestick formations above this, right? Where's the, where, where's the advancement? Where's the power? Where's the strength? What you want to see is what you see here. We break above, strength, 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 gap, right? Push above, advance. Yeah, pull back, advance. Like you're just trying to go. Here we... Uh, Push above, back below. Push above, back below. Look at these upper wicks. There, where's the advancement? Where's the strength? We don't see that, in my opinion. So below, let's watch the 247.12, 242.28, And below that, looks like we have the 230.52. So... Those are areas where, you know, buyers may step in or areas where you may see a little bit of battle on price. Above this area, we have the, have a line there, like 251 something, but like 251.73 probably is the line. But then we have 260.25 and 266.87. So looking at these last few days, um, these three days to be specific, we were unable to get above the 260.02. So for me, that's the level I'll be watching. Is that 260.02, can, when will price advance and hold above that? And when will we get bullish? So we really need to get bullish above the 250s, but we can see that above the 260 area, we need to close above that. And once we see a close, close above that, we will see something different than we've seen since we've seen this drop off. So we'll see how, um, how that works out. And if we hold, if the buyers pop us back up, if we gap up, we gap down uh, headed into Monday morning. Um, so we'll see. But these are the levels to watch on NVIDIA. Next up, take a peek at Netflix. Mm -hmm. Now here is the trend line for Netflix from September. And boom, boom, boom. And here we go. Gap below pushed up into it, boom, we're trying to hold this trend line. Let's see how that works out. So as far as price on Netflix, watch the 343, because we're right below this 361.79 area, we're below that. So watch 343, 335, 330, and above, if we happen to get back above that 361, 370, then 384. And if you remember on Netflix, 384, is the level that held since 2018. And we did get a slight push above, but we, as you can see, there is no bullish, no strength above this. Buyers didn't see more value to the upside. Not yet. So we'll see how that shakes out. But even here, look at the push. Above 361, there's no strength. There's no power, no strength, no push to the upside. Where, where are the buyers saying, hey, 
we see more value up here. We want to buy. We want to drive this price. We don't see it. We'll see when we, if we pull back to this trend line, if we just get below that and we fade. But I want to see advancement in price and bullish candlestick formations above this level here, this 361.79. So I'll mark that, probably pop an alert in. But I want to see advancement of price and a drive to the upside here. Uh, next up, let's see. It's so Netflix, Microsoft, Amazon. Always love looking at Amazon. Let's take a peek at CMG. And so CMG popped like everything else. It got to that 656 area and we don't see advancement in price. It's already going back down. Where's the, where's the strength? So we'll see if we get some buyers, but we have 607.59, 526.70. I believe we had a 486 area and a 380 area that we were watching on this also. But earnings is coming up. Um, I pretty much think I have burritos every week, at least once or twice. I do like uh, Chipotle. Um, but we need buyers. We need buyers. We definitely need buyers. Look at this drop here. We need buyers. So just can see the advancement in price here. Be careful um, if you're along this. And the levels aren't bad. If if I was a long-term investor in Chipotle, um, the levels that it is right now, they're not bad for a store that uh, typically does good numbers and usually does good on earnings and is doing a lot of things with their delivery side as far as the new restaurants that they're that they're building or the new store that they're building they're coming with the uh, drive through so they're definitely planning to enhance their delivery and their pickup side we'll have to see um, how their their earnings that's coming up is going to be impacted by the uh, coronavirus and people people's inability to be to be in uh, Chipotle. Because what I've noticed about Chipotle's, the first one that I went to was uh, right outside of a university. And they had a ton of college students that were there um, every single day. The line was around the block. It was insane. Um, so I don't know how much, depending on, I guess it's location-based, right? How many Chipotle's are, are, are near universities? And based on those universities being, uh, being temporarily uh, closed, how will their business uh, suffer? Those specific branches that are near universities where maybe the, uh, the main clientele are college students, but if they're no longer there because they're home, then who's buying those burritos at those specific locations? And how many locations are that? I mean, how many locations are there that have lost that clientele? So that could be interesting. Uh, let's keep it moving. Looking at ABBV, and we are above the 66, but look here. Where's the advancement in price? So it looks like 74, 70s is the area we need to get back above. And I'll, just, I'll set an alert on that break above. But below we have 69, 44, 66, 70. Looks like we went lower, and I need to reevaluate this chart because if you wonder why I don't have these lower levels, um, on some of these tickers, it's primarily because I was using TOS a lot and I switched over to uh, trading view a few months ago. And so I did not actually draw these lower levels, but I do have all these levels all the way down to where it's been, you know, things have been in the last um, 10 years. I do have all those levels drawn, but on TOS not necessarily on uh, trading view, but I will get around to it. But if we're watching ABVV, we're at the 72.67 area. Below we have 69.44 and then 66.70. Above we have 74.73. We haven't seen bullish, I wanna see bullish um, candlestick formations in volume and strength above the 74.70s. And we're not seeing that right now. So we'll see how that goes with um, ABVV. Uh, next up, 
check out our Dollar Tree. Where are you, Dollar Tree? So it looks like we had a dip to the 6015. Buyers kicked us up to 65.65, then 72.80. Right now we're at 77s. Uh, we want to hold above that 72.80. We'll see, but below 72.80, then 65.65, above 79.47, 84.15, 86.75, 84.50, 86.75. Or just 86, as you could say, but I like these numbers. Then 89.42. So it looks like we had one, two, three days where we couldn't advance above the 84 area. So that's interesting. There's something to watch. Um, you know what? I'm setting an alert here, right about here. Add alert. Um, eh, I could optimize that later. Um, but this is something I do want to keep an eye on. We'll see how that shakes out. We're watching Goose also. Where are you, Goose? So Goose came up off the mat. I guess it's going to die down here um, at the 1570s. Tested the 20 area. Now we're rejecting. We'll see if there's anything here if we end up back down in the 1570s, but I do kind of uh, like Goose longer term. I do like these levels on Goose. I like this pop here, um, but we'll see how um, Goose shakes out, but I'm watch still watching Goose closely. I do like that pop. We'll see if price dips back down here below the uh, into the 15s. I'm really waiting for there to be an announcement of a cure of some kind and for numbers in uh, the coronavirus numbers to start going down before I really um, start to, to leg into any positions. I really want to hear that. Because to me, it's, it's, it's the same thing. The bottle's leaking or the patient's bleeding out. You give the patient a pint of, a pint of blood and there's internal bleeding and just blood flowing all over, the, all, all over the operating table. And you're saying, you know, hey, surgery's successful. But the patient's still bleeding out. So it, a, a pint of blood isn't going to stop the patient from bleeding out. you got to stop the bleeding. Once you stop the bleeding, now we have a chance to save the patient. So as long as these cases are going up, I'm still, you know, um, a little bit skittish as far as uh, jumping in to uh, positions and saying, hey, this is the bottom. Let's go. I don't know where the bottom is. The numbers keep going up. And if the reason for the dip is that there's fear and uncertainty around uh, the coronavirus, then what has been done to reduce or remove that fear and uncertainty? Number we're over 100,000 cases right now. So I think that um, there is just a little bit of uncertainty as to when the uh, numbers will stop, when there will be a cure, and when we will get back uh, you know, globally to business as usual, right? So we have to see how, uh, when that's resolved, in my opinion, before we can truly see um, true strength and, um, and true buying come back. That's just my opinion. Uh, Apple. And so let's see, below the 256.23, let me add an alert on Apple here. <laughs> Um, so we dipped as low as 215, it looks like. And right now we're hanging out around the 247 area. We want to keep an eye on the uh, 236 below and 229 below that 215 to the upside, 256, which we struggle to advance in price above, then 267, then 277. This is a trend line here. We drew this way back here, like we're holding above that. So we haven't even back tested that trend line yet, it looks like. Um, not really. So we have to see how um, that shakes when we get above that. And uh, Apple's definitely uh, struggling. I mean, so many of their stores are closed. Um, we have to see what those next earnings are. A lot of these companies are warning and uh, guiding down. So we'll see how that shakes. Um, with Apple, and let's see who else. So boom, 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 boom. Um, 
So next up we have Twilio. Pardon me. Um, okay. Let's see. Twilio. As low as 71. Nice little bounce here. We're climbing back up. So if we're watching Twilio, let's take a peek at the all keep an eye on the 9052. Then 79, 31. Oh, these areas are wide. And above we have 104. And above that 111, 73. And above that 117. So we're watching on Twilio. Next up we have Intel. And uh, let's drag this this way. Let's look at Intel. Mm -hmm. Love this candle structure here. Okay, look at these bottoms right here around the 4530s. We talked about that last week, but 4540s what I have. How we held those. Now we're pushing up. Nice little pop here into the 50. 571 ish area, but we need advancement above that. Not seeing that, and now we are here at the 52 area. So, what we want to watch for is do we see strength at 5113? Do buyers step in at the 49 area, and then at the 4727, then 45. If we roll through 45 and I see bearish formations below this, I will be fading that just because look at the strength here where. The uh, buyer said, no, we think there's value to the upside here. Multiple days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of buyers saying no advancement of price below this level. Like Gundolf, thou shalt not pass, right? Okay, so let's see how this goes here. Um, if we see advancement here, if we hold, see buying here. But I think this is interesting that they stepped in and said no more. Take a peek at CI. And we went as low as the 124s. CI is interesting in the 140s. That's usually where the buyers stepped in historically. Like look here. Boom, 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 boom. Buyer stepped in those 140s. So we'll see. We did advance below that level. Look at these. The, 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 this is multiple days of us below that 140 level. But we did push back up. So we're above the 157 area. We'll see if buyers do step in and give us a little bit of action to the upside. Below that is the 147s. The 140s, we want people to step in here. Right around this 147 area is where we expect uh, buyers to step in usually. But we see here, it didn't happen. And you see the first day below, then it bought back up into it. Then below, then we had a strong drop. Then we had a pull back into it of buyers trying to get us back above that price point. So we'll see how this plays out um, over multiple days. But uh, CI is one of my favorite um, healthcare uh, companies. And so we'll see how this, uh, this shakes out. But watch the 147s to see what the buyers do there. Historically, they've thought that they've been more value to the upside from that area. And so watch the 157s, the 163s to the upside, then the 173s and the 180s. Take a peek at CI. Tesla. Oh my gosh, this is insane. So if you're looking at Tesla, where we are now below the 554s. Um, keep your eye on this. So to the downside, we have 498, 485, 472, 454, and then 435. Look how deep we went. We're down here in the threes. This is what, 359s. And we pop back up. And so we kind of hit our head right about here at the 553 area. Came back down 546. We see this drop here. So um, keep an eye on Tesla, but those are the levels that I have for Tesla, the immediate levels. Tesla can move, has been moving very, um, very, very rangy or very big, I say, on the uh, intraday. But keep an eye on these levels. We'll see if buyers step in or if we're headed back to the downside. But 
we saw the, the lower extension all the way down here. Look at this candle plateau right in this area. This 360s. So we'll see if that continues. Let's pull the weekly real quick. Mm -hmm. So if we remember before, this area here, 388s, was the area that we could not break. That was the area that was just a brick wall for Tesla. So now on this drop, once we went below this level, that's when you know a lot of people started buying. Why? Because this level was so strong and was 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 uh supply for so many so so long. For, let's see, this is the first test was 2017, and we didn't break that until when is this? Uh, December 2019. So just a push back through that area, we should have expected there to be a bounce, right? And there was one. See that right here. Will we roll back through that area? We don't know. But we do know that supply becomes demand. Demand can become supply. So long-term supply has become demand. And the drop through that area, buyers stepped in. You know, we had a little bit of good news as far as the stimulus package explosion to the upside so we'll see how tesla resolves but tesla is an interesting chart and um yeah I like that so we yeah i'll stop there so if you uh like this video please don't hesitate to tap that like button and don't hesitate to also subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Power of Pivots, where you can look forward to receiving content from Elisa as she shows you how she utilizes her Power of Pivot script to find great intraday trades and swing trades and also future setups. Uh, thank you for your time and have a wonderful week of trading.